Hello everybody, this is Stefan Buntrock from Euro Channel. I am a urologist and sexologist and this is a video on multi-orgasms in women. YouTube statistics tells me that mostly men watch my content, but the information will be interesting for women too. So without further ado, you men out there, can you handle a multi-orgasmic woman? I will give you an overview of this topic from the perspective of the sexologist. Please take the time to watch all of the video because you will need some basic information first. Even if you think you know what multi-orgasms are, you're most probably mistaken because there is still no univocal definition. This video will give you an idea what you will have to do in bed, but don't be disappointed. Human beings have their own unique and individual sexuality, which means that this is not an instructional manual of how to operate a woman. If you listen carefully, you will know what to do. If you're looking for sex tips like press here and kiss there, you probably want to switch to that kind of content on another channel on YouTube. Actually, this video is the sequel of the video on male multiple orgasms. In contrast to men, more is known about multiple orgasms in women, but even if scientific reports on that phenomenon exist since the end of the 20s of the last century, until today very little is known. We don't even have much data on the percentage of multi-orgasmic women. Through the work of Alfred Kinsey we know that back in the 50s 14% of the women he and his team interviewed answered that they could climax more than once through intercourse. But what about today? I mean, that was the 50s. To disclose that kind of information could have been more difficult for people back then. And today, with sex everywhere, maybe it's easier for people to talk more open about it. Or maybe not, since sex still is a big taboo in communication. Overall, research focuses much more on sexual dysfunction than on normal sexual function, despite the fact that there is an immense public interest in topics like this. And it all starts with a proper definition. What are multi-orgasms? To be frank, we don't have a clear understanding of the female orgasm in general. It's confusing. There has been debate over clitoral orgasms, vaginal orgasms, mixed orgasms, coital and extracoital, etc., etc., in order to describe what is happening. The G-spot? Fact or fiction? But back to multiple orgasms. How are they characterized? What features do women display who are multi-orgasmic? When does it start in life? Have they always been this way? Or is it something that can be learned? Is this only happening with a partner or also during masturbation? Does it happen every time? How long does it take to happen after initiation of sexual activity? How many orgasms in a row are we talking about? Do they get more intense each time? How long do they last? Questions, questions, questions. But I might have some answers even if they are not carved in stone. There have been attempts to define multiple orgasms with very widespread conceptualization. All definitions agree that multiple orgasms are characterized by more than one orgasm during a single sexual encounter. Maybe the biggest problem is timing. In other words, how much time is there between orgasms? Kinsey notes that it may be a few seconds, sometimes up to two minutes, which is quite unprecise. In the 60s, Masters and Johnson defined two distinctive types, repeated and sequential orgasms. Repeated means several orgasms with a rest in between, but arousal not dropping below plateau level, whereas sequential is defined by a rapid progression of orgasms with arousal not dropping below plateau, or a single orgasmic period for 20 to 60 or more seconds. Even in this definition, timing is elusive. In the 70s, Haidt came up with a definition that also included two types, sequential and multiple orgasms. The term sequential is used slightly different from Masters and Johnson in a sense that there is a necessary pause of not further specified duration in between orgasms. Hyde considers multiple orgasms as continued events with uninterrupted stimulation. In 2008, Haining and colleagues came up with a time indication, 30 seconds or more, between orgasms and continuing sexual tension. To sum this up, the problem of defining multiple orgasms in women is that it is somewhat unclear 
how the timing between orgasms should be understood and whether there is continuous stimulation or not. I don't mean to bore you with this stuff, but it is very important to understand the problems in defining the phenomenon. It matters when research is done based on different definitions. Depending on how multiple orgasms are defined, the results will vary a lot. As you will remember, Kinsey was talking about a proportion of 14% multi-orgasmic women. In the sample of Darling and colleagues who looked at 805 college-educated female nurses, the proportion of multi-orgasmic participants was as high as 42.7%. In 2020, Gerard and co-workers published a study in the Journal of Sex Research that was based on a survey they conducted online with volunteers from North America and the Middle East. I will put a link to that study in the description below. They intended to get a better grasp of what female multiple orgasms consist of, how they are characterized in terms of timing, partnered activities, stimulation types, etc. 1,351 women who considered themselves as being multi-orgasmic visited the platform, but not all of them completed the survey. That left them with 419 data sets for analysis. According to the type of context, they then formed three groups. Women who reported multi-orgasms predominantly through self-stimulation, which was 36%, women who needed the presence of a partner, which was 59%, and a small number of women with combined self and partner stimulation, which was 5%. They ranged in age between 18 to 69 years with a mean age of 33 years. 66% defined themselves as heterosexual and 26% as bisexual. Their working definition of multiple orgasms was two or more orgasms in a single session without significant breaks. And here's in short what they found. The mean age of the onset of single orgasms was roughly 14 years and it took quite a while for the first multiple orgasms to occur at a mean age of 19 years. Women in the solo group experienced their first multiple orgasms two years earlier as women in the partnered group. I think it's not very surprising that there was more control over the ability to reach multiple orgasms with self-stimulation than with partnered activity. The typical number of orgasms in one session was a median of three. If you are not familiar with statistics, mean and median are related measures. The median value is more robust when it comes to extreme values that are outliers. And in multiple orgasms, there were outliers. 10% experienced more than eight orgasms, and a very small number of 12 women reached a whole 70.58 orgasms. Interestingly, with 39.5 years, they were also the oldest women in the sample. This is an interesting finding as it contradicts the common assumption that age is inversely correlated to orgasmic capabilities. Furthermore, there is a theory that orgasm is partly learned and that it may involve developmental learning. This finding might give some support to this approach. The most important stimulation type that was reported of half was manual clitoral stimulation. Penetration was the second important, followed by vibratory stimulation. Significant differences were found in intensity between the first and second orgasm according to group membership. In self-stimulation, there was a decrease in intensity. In partner stimulation, the intensity of the orgasms increased. For male standards, it took a while to get there. From stopwatch studies in men, we know that the intravaginal ejaculation latency time, the IELT, ranges between 5.4 to 6 minutes. That's median values. This means that it takes 5 to 6 minutes for a man to ejaculate once he has penetrated his partner. Guess how long it took the women in the study to reach their first orgasm? Of course, as you might have expected, it took much longer. Roughly 13 minutes in partnered sex and 7 minutes in self-stimulation. After the first orgasm, 58% continued with stimulation, whereas 20% had to pause for one minute and 12% had to pause for two to three minutes. The second orgasm was then reached after roughly four minutes in partnered activity and nearly three minutes in solo sex. If there was a pause in stimulation, it took a little longer. Okay, let's do some math here. It takes about six minutes for a man to climax and 17 minutes at a minimum for a multi-orgasmic woman to reach two orgasms. Assuming a median of three orgasms, we are talking about 20 minutes minimum here. 
This requires a lot of communication between the partners because compatibility is an issue. Now ask yourselves, do you know whether your female partner is multi-orgasmic? Do you know what she wants you to do to satisfy her? And this is a very important point. Many men falsely believe that a large penis is the holy grail to a woman's sexual fulfillment. Think again. Size is most probably not what's required here. It's communication skills instead. Because with six minutes, most men are not even close to impress their partner. This is why I said in the beginning that there are no sex tips one can give in a video. What you need to do is something you will have to figure out by yourselves together with your partner. So back to the main question, timing. A break in stimulation, how much time are we talking about? In the study, roughly half of the women classified as multi-orgasmic according to the definition of height, meaning that they experienced two or more orgasms without interrupting stimulation. If there was an interruption, it lasted from one to three minutes for 80% of the women, and this means that a significant break means no more than three minutes between the first and second orgasm. Any questions? Put them in the comment section. I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.